Today's video is all about building custom tools with Langchain that agents can use and perform different tasks. And today's video, we will actually make our first agent. In the last video, we learned about conversational memory and how that helps agents remember the context of the conversation by storing the entire conversation or the summary of the conversation. And we will be using memory with our agents today. And this is why I made the memory video before today's video. You might want to check out that video, which is titled Langchain Conversational Memory for Agents. Today's video is part of the Gen AI and LLM projects playlist. So make sure you check out the other projects in this playlist. And there's a playlist called the LLM Concepts playlist, which will help with the concepts used in these projects. So make sure to check that out as well. I'll be taking you through a code example and it's a collab file, the link for which is in the description of this video. So make sure you make a copy of it so that you can refer to it later on. Now, before we go through the code file, just wanna quickly tell you about tools. So tools, as I mentioned earlier, enable agents to perform different tasks. So tools, just like memory, make agents much more powerful. Now, many tools come standard with Langchain, but most importantly, Langchain gives us the ability to build custom tools and that's what makes it so powerful. You can get your agent to do anything on the internet with the right tools from scraping the web to finding search results to posting stuff for you on social media to even booking tickets. Today we will take a look at a couple of tools then we will also create our own tools. So let's get started. We start by installing Langchain, OpenAI and DuckDuckGo search because we're going to get our agent to search something for us on the internet with DuckDuckGo. Then we set our OpenAI API key, import OpenAI from Langchain, chat OpenAI from Langchain chat models, and we import the most efficient type of memory that we learned about in the previous video, which is the conversation buffer window memory. It uses the least amount of tokens and also stores only a small part of the interaction between the user and the LLM. We set up our LLM, which is chat OpenAI with the model GPT 3.5 Turbo and a temperature of zero to keep answers non-deterministic. In the next cell, we actually want to create our tool. So on top, I'm importing the already existing DuckDuckGo search tool from Langchain Tools and I'm creating a tool called search and making it equal to the DuckDuckGo search tool. When I'm initializing my tool below in the function, I'm passing search.run to give the LLM the ability to run a search whenever required. And in the description, I tell the LLM that this tool is useful whenever you need to answer questions about current events because GPT 3.5 Turbo has a training cutoff date which is in the past and it doesn't have real-time access to the internet unless you give it tools like this one. All right, so we've seen what a tool looks like. Now I'm going to define a custom tool and there isn't much to it. You just have to create a function like here I'm defining a function called meaning of life and that's because I want my agent to have access to a tool called life tool which it can use whenever it's asked the question about the meaning of life. And this function returns 42 as the meaning of life. In the next cell, I define my tool called the life tool and give it a name. And in the function, I pass in the meaning of life function that we created and also give it a description telling the LLM that this tool will be useful when you need to answer questions about the meaning of life. Then I define another tool that helps me generate a random number. Very simple function using random init to return a number between zero and five. I even call that function below to get three as the output. And then I define my tool called random tool and I pass in the random function for the function and description. So now that we have two custom tools and one standard tool, which is the DuckDuckGo search tool, we want to see how we can create agents using Langchain and give them access to these tools that we have just made. And it's all happening in the next cell where I'm importing initialize agent from Langchain agents and I'm initializing my tools with three different tools. The search tool, the random tool and the life tool that we just built that just returns 42 as the answer to the meaning of life. After initializing my tools, I want to initialize the second most important thing required by agents and that's memory. I'm going to use conversation buffer memory here and then initialize my agent and the name I've given to it is conversational agent. And to this agent, I'm going to pass the tools that I've initialized earlier. Then I'm going to pass the LLM and also the memory along with some other fields like do I want it to be verbose? How many max iterations do I want, etc. Now I can simply call my agent with a prompt. So I ask it, what time is it in London? And in the output, you can see the action selected is DuckDuckGo search. So it was smart enough to know that it doesn't know the current time and it has a tool that can help it fetch this information. So it goes ahead and uses this tool to get us the right information. Next, I ask it to give me a random number and selects the action as random number. It's calling the random number tool that we have equipped it with and sure enough, we get the answer as four. Then I ask it the meaning of life and here in the output, it gives me a detailed answer for the meaning of life. And it says the meaning of life is a philosophical question that has been debated by scholars and philosophers for centuries. This just means it did not use our tool, the life tool that we gave it using which it could have answered 42 for the meaning of life. And you will see this happen quite often. 
the agent sometimes doesn't realize it has to use the tool and not call the LLM directly. But luckily there is a workaround for this. You basically have to edit the prompt template a bit. So in the next cell you see that I've printed the prompt template and you can read the entire template since you have access to this file. But in short, it's just asking the assistant to provide valuable insights on a wide range of topics. And in the next cell, I'm going to change it around a bit. So you see what I've written is assistant doesn't know anything about random numbers or anything related to the meaning of life and should use a tool for questions about these topics. This means we're telling the agent that, hey, you should use tools that we have given you to answer questions on these topics and don't rely on your knowledge because you don't know anything about these topics. So you're kind of programming the agent to think in a particular way. And that's why they say English is the new programming language. All right, in the next cell, we set our agent's prompt template to this new fixed prompt that we just created. And we again ask it the meaning of life and we get 42 as the answer. Awesome. So this works exactly the way we want it to work. And now you know how to ensure that the agent always uses the tool that you've given it. By the way, this workaround that I just showed you, which is setting up the fixed prompt, is a very legit solution. And we will be using this in many future videos to build awesome projects. So now that we know how tools work and how agents can use these tools, it's the perfect time to build our own tool, which would empower an agent to do something useful and not something that simply returns a random number or 42 as the meaning of life. So we're creating a function called stripped web page where you can pass the URL of a web page and you will get the stripped HTML tags as output. So in the next cell, when you pass google.com to the stripped web page function, you get the output with all the links that you would see when you open Google, like images, maps, play, YouTube, Gmail, and Drive. So now that we know this works, we will create our web page tool class that will help us access content from a web page. So you have a run function, you have the strip HTML tags function, and you have the ability to capture the stripped content after stripping the HTML tags. We also have a function for async run where we just return that this tool does not support async. Finally, we set our tool name as page getter and we make this equal to the web page tool we just created. This means when we create our agent next, we will be passing page getter as a tool to it. And this tool enables it to get content from a particular web page. Now comes the most important part where we are setting another fixed prompt and this time we're telling the agent you don't know the information about the content of web pages and should always check the meaning. So use a tool for it. In the next cell, we initialize our tools and sure enough, we pass the page getter tool and then we're initializing our conversation agent. We pass the list of our tools along with the memory. And in the next cell, we set the agent's prompt template to our fixed prompt. And then we print it just to verify. And sure enough, we can see that the line assistant doesn't know information about content on web pages and should always check if asked. Now that our agent is ready with the new fixed prompt as well as the tools, it's time to put it to test. So we call our conversational agent and ask it, is there an article about Clubhouse on TechCrunch today? In the output, the agent struggles a bit in the beginning, but it's then able to successfully grab some articles where Clubhouse is mentioned in the title as well as somewhere in the article. And the next question we ask it, what are the titles of the top stories on CBS News? And it's able to get us some nice stories. So the agent works as designed. It's able to fetch content from web pages based on the questions asked, meaning it's able to understand the user's query and then get the right content. Now, some people at this point might think what's the requirement of the LLM here? You could have just scraped the information, right? Well, that requires a lot of engineering actually. How to search for those terms, how to use regex, how to filter. And if you've watched any of the Golang scraping projects on this channel, you probably know what I'm talking about. So all we're doing here is initializing an agent, passing it a small tool. The agent is figuring out everything else with the help of an LLM in all just about 20 lines. So using LLMs is a really effective approach. If you've reached this far, it means you're really interested in AI and LLM. So don't forget to join our Discord server where we discuss discuss latest technologies. The link for the Discord server is in my YouTube profile. I also want to thank our sponsors for this video, which is you. Yes, you are the sponsor of this video and this channel is completely dependent on you sharing this content because I don't have any partnerships or sponsorships. And this is a really small channel with extremely technical and niche content, which doesn't really get served by YouTube. So make sure you share this with your friends and you like and comment on this video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for all that you've done for the channel and I'll see you in the next video.